Joining us now on the markets, Noah Blackstein, Dynamic Funds Vice President and Senior Portfolio Manager. Noah, uh, good to have you with us. Good morning. So uh, t talk about the setup a little bit here. We've had this little, I don't know, eight-week round trip in the in major indexes. You had the 5% pullback. We've come all the way back. Another scare that maybe the soft economic landing isn't going to be there or yield's going to run away from us. We settled back into a comfortable zone. How do you read the, uh, the risk-reward from here? You know, I think the risk reward um, is going to probably change over the next little while uh, from our perspective. I think that um, this is a market where obviously we're quite confident we'll, we'll, we're getting rate cuts this year. Uh, I think real rates are way too high uh, versus uh, uh, where inflation is right now. Um, but I think that if you look at what's going to be driving a uh, factor behind uh, companies and, and stock prices, it's clearly shifting more toward a focus on earnings and revenues versus a recovery or low volatility. Uh, the market seems to be rewarding those companies that are delivering on earnings. And so, you know, I think that has to do with with volatility calming down somewhat in the equity markets, still uh, elevated volatility in the bond market. Um, but as volatility has come down and the stock specific or idiosyncratic factors have come to the fore, I think we're moving into a, a market that is punishing losers uh, who aren't delivering clearly and, and rewarding winners. And, and for stock pickers, um, you know, taking the macro uh, albatross that's been around those markets next since 21 uh, and allowing people to focus on individual stocks, both on the long and short side, uh, is much better. So earnings season matters, company outlooks matter for sure. Uh, but there are drivers to be excited about. You know, in terms of the overall market, it's a tougher call because the overall market is so top heavy, probably the heaviest it's ever been in, in, in the last 50 years. So, you know, movements of a few of the large companies could affect the index. But underneath the surface, we certainly are starting to see broadening overall, uh, and a lot of, and that's fundamentally driven, which is a, a big positive. Uh, so you you said you're confident you were going to get rate cuts. Um, <laughs> is that just because, based on you know the Fed's assessment, the policy is restrictive right now, or you think inflation's really going to uh, show big decline from here? How do we get to, to multiple cuts? Yeah, yeah, certainly I think that you're going to the things that are propping up uh, the inflation numbers are are, are you know. Uh, overfitted, backdated surveys like owner's equivalent rent and other things like that. I think in other markets that look at things like uh, mortgage payments and other things, uh, the inflation rates topped a while ago. I think, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get the Fed message because you know, one of the things that former Chair Bernanke did was uh, everyone goes out and says what they think, and the message gets a little muddled. You know, you sort of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, one person speaks, all the generals don't come out with different opinions. And so the message gets muddled a little bit, but it's fairly clear from from what Powell is saying, if you just focus on that, that, this, that things are much more in balance between uh, their dual mandate of labor and, and overall inflation. So the numbers are coming down de facto as inflation continues to fall, uh, and the Federal Reserve holds, they are continuing to tighten. Uh, and so we're seeing the, the early signs that things are coming down. You know, Target this morning, unfortunately, is, uh, is not having a good morning. A couple of days ago, they announced price cuts on over 5,000 items. Uh, their press release today talked about lowering prices. Uh, McDonald's is, you know, trying to entice people with a five dollar uh, meal to bring people back. That is not the sign of hyperinflation for sure. Um, when that makes it into econometric models and mm -hmm. smooth, overfitted and, and models, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's clear in the sort of high frequency data that things are coming down. So, you know, the Fed could pause and then continue not to ignore those signs. And that is a serious risk for the overall market. Too high for too long. Um, but in our view, they should be. And, and the sense we get from the Federal Reserve is that they will be cutting uh, at least twice this year.